is an eight iron and it's a dead shank. Wow. Way right. Oh, Take that shot off the puzzle. Ah. You gotta be kidding me. Very tough pitch shot right here. You gotta hit it into the hill. One hop up and bite and it's in. Kind of like that. Well, I would like to welcome back to the Sub 70 podcast, Symmetra Tour winner and 2019 LPGA Tour player, Elizabeth Zokel to the podcast. Elizabeth, thanks for taking the time today to uh, come back on with us. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me again. Well, um, when I announce you as an LPGA Tour player, how does that feel? And what a huge step last year, finishing fourth on the Symmetra Tour money list to, to earn your card. I mean, you have to be beyond excited. Definitely. I can't wait for next year. It was definitely a, a tough two years on Symmetra and definitely a bit stressful towards the end, trying to stay in the top 10, but really happy with how I played those last few events and really excited for next year we do have one problem though with you being on the lpga tour next year i as you well know have one victory on the uh, tour myself the 2018 island resort pro-am you're ab- you're <laughs> yes, abandoning us yeah i mean you're abandoning my major championship to defend last year i think i have a two-year exemption and everything into this event and <laughs> you're, you know you're leaving us high and dry so i guess we're gonna have to find a replacement next year unfortunately I know I'll have to find you someone good. <laughs> I think I think we're going to try to get Maya to do it. Oh, that'd be fun. You have to. Yeah, yeah. I think we put her in the group and, you know, see if we can go, if I can win two majors in a row, which would be huge for my amateur career. <laughs> there so you go. We'll see what happens. No pressure it. on Maya. No, no, especially with those expectations. Um, <laughs> no, it'll be fun, but we're going to miss having you out there. I had a blast last year and winning it was fun, but I, I think Maya's up for it. I hope so. <laughs> uh the 2019 LPGA Tour season, when, I have two questions for you on that, when will it start for you, and then are you fully exempt into any of the events that you want to, to get into, or is there still some limitation coming off Symmetra Tour? So we actually haven't yet gotten the official schedule, but it looks like it's either going to start end of January or beginning of February. I'm not quite sure on that yet. Hopefully we get the schedule in the next couple days here um and there are some limitations into what i'm exempt into i should get close to around 16 18 events something like that just based off of my status earned from symmetra i'll have to play my way into the majors just by money list and doing well except for the u.s open u.s open i'll have to monday qualify for and then there's some there are some events based on previous year's money list there are a couple events in asia and February that I won't be able to get into, but I have a good amount of events guaranteed, which is pretty great. Did you go to Q school at all? Would there have been any advantage to going up in status if you went to the end of your Q school, or are you not allowed to, by finishing fourth on the Symmetra Tour, there's no point in trying to to double dip per se, or is there any help in that potentially? No, there's no help. My status, my priority number is actually ahead of those from Q school, so no, no one from the top 10 goes back to Q school, which was definitely very nice to not have to do that. And it was it definitely seemed like a grueling two weeks at the new Q series that they came up with. So I was definitely happy to have a couple weeks off and not have to do that. <laughs> Injuries. I know you kind of had some knee problems last year, um, kind of got taken care of a little bit, obviously played well going down the stretch. How's your body feeling after, you know, two full years on tour and and is there any nagging stuff you're trying to take care of for next year yeah pretty good overall of course just some nagging stuff especially I played the last six weeks straight so that was definitely tiring and took about three weeks off after the season and kind of just let my body recover which definitely helped and kind of got, got everything back to normal and now just addressing some things in my swing and some things in fitness to kind of get in really good shape for next year and a lot more golf next year obviously four-day tournaments more travel across the country so just trying to be as healthy as I can for next year and just preparing for that anything in your game specifically you're working on um you know when I looked at the stats from last year it was really really solid I mean long off the tee putting stats were good no glaring weaknesses and you know you finished fourth on the money list so you know from 10,000 feet it certainly doesn't look like there's anything that's struggling in your game but is there anything that you're trying to get to the next level on that you know you're going to need on the lpga tour 
Yeah, I think, I mean, this may surprise you after playing with you at the Island Resort, but I actually, when I played really well, I was definitely hitting it really straight off the tee. And those weeks that I wasn't, I was kind of all over the place with drivers. So kind of trying to get that a little bit more consistent, uh, keep that length and just hit it a little bit straighter. And I really, I think the difference between year one on Sumatra and year two is I really, really worked on probably that 80 to 120 yard range. So a lot of wedges and kind of getting those distances zoned in to give myself good birdie opportunities and take advantage of my length off the tee, especially I'm in the fairway. Um, So definitely working on those two things and continuing that this winter. Were you surprised how many wedges once you got on on tour with the length that you have off the tee? And for people who haven't looked at the stats, you almost averaged 280 yards off the tee last year, which is, it's, you know, I've seen it up close. It's hit good. Is that something that you, you saw right away that, okay, I have this weapon, which is the length, but I have to be able to dial in those wedges to be able to make birdies and hit that, you know, within that 10 foot circle a little bit more often than say you did in college. Yeah, it definitely took me a little bit of time, to be honest. When I went to Q School my first year out of college, I had a lot of longer clubs in on some par threes and kind of thought that I was going to have a lot of six irons and five irons, and that wasn't something that I hit very often in college. So my first winter of off season, I really worked on those longer irons, and I got up to Sumatra and realized maybe I'd hit two, two six irons around, so that really wasn't the area of focus for me so after a couple months on my first year on tour I really realized I needed to focus on those shorter irons and wedges and I think that definitely made a big difference and also I think kind of thinking through a little bit more when it's appropriate to use that off the team kind of when I have to dial back as well and play smart so those are kind of things that I had away um, and just kind of giving myself the best opportunity for birdie or at worst make par. Last year, I know you did not have a full-time caddy, and going out in the LPGA Tour, I'm assuming you will, well, I should ask, are you going to be having a full-time caddy next year? I would like to, yes. Um, Still kind of working on finding someone, Um, so working on that. I just use volunteers on Sinatra, so kind of someone different, local, every week, which I really enjoyed. It was nice to get to know people and kind of get to know the area that we were playing in, which was a lot of fun for me. Um, But I would like to have someone full-time next year. I think someone that gets to know me uh, and just helps me kind of navigate the courses for the first time. Are you offering, Jason? um, I think my wife would not be real thrilled if I left for 20 (laughs) weeks a year. And plus, I'm a terrible green reader, relatively speaking. So, no, you do not want me caddying for you trying to read greens on golf courses I'm not familiar with. But, no, it's it's, and this is my next question I was going to get to, and this is just from – doing a bunch of these podcasts, right, that inherently, just naturally, you're at a slight disadvantage to the other women on the LPGA Tour who have, say, played for five years because they've seen those golf courses. They know the golf courses. So how much of a, would that caddy, how much experience would that caddy need, in your opinion, of helping you get up to speed as fast as possible so you're not at that disadvantage? Yeah, absolutely. I've talked to a couple friends about that, actually, and just I think just having a caddy that's knowledgeable and goes out and walks the golf course and maps greens and figures out distances and knowing my length and when I should hit driver when it's a bit risky and helping me with approach shots because I know a lot of the pins on LPGA are pretty tucked and more difficult than what I'm used to. So kind of helping me navigate that uh, and just them really having good knowledge of the course will be immensely helpful to me. Yeah, I never... We went out to the Champions Tour event uh, for the senior major that they had at Exmoor, and uh, Jay and I were just kind of hanging out later in the day. And I know those guys worked hard, but I didn't know the caddies worked that hard. I mean, they were out mapping. They were hitting wedges, looking at the greens, helping with their books, all for their player, and they were all over the golf course. So, you know, I know those guys put a lot of effort in what it, when those guys talk about like it's a team effort or I'm sure the women on the LPGA Tour say it's a team effort. It really is, you know, at the level you're going to be playing at and the level, you know, the Champions Tour guys are at of how much work and benefit a really good caddy, you know, could be to, to a player, I'd have to imagine. Yes, absolutely. It would definitely be a big benefit to have someone really knowledgeable and be doing all that coursework that I was kind of doing for myself in the past, so. But it'll definitely be a big advantage. 
living in the Midwest and trying to play golf year round can be difficult as it's snowing here today like crazy. Are you gonna <laughs> yes. are you gonna be looking for a different home base? And if so, is it uh, you know is it Florida? Is it Arizona? And then do you need to find if you do move? Do you need to find a facility or a course that the LPGA tour might have an association with where you can get your practice time in? at a kind of world-class facility that can kind of help, you know, get your game to the next level. Yeah, definitely. That's something that I put a lot of thought into. I think I'm going to go out to California. I was actually there for two weeks already, kind of escaping the cold Chicago, and I'm going to go back there next week for a couple of weeks to California. But I think in the future, maybe trying to find a place in Florida. My coach is in North Carolina, and obviously getting to Chicago from Florida is a little bit quicker and easier for me and seeing my coach. So probably down the road somewhere in Florida and, of course, finding a club with great facilities and being able to practice and play is definitely important. So that's something that I'll really have to look into and evaluate where I want to move and kind of ask some friends and other people what they do and get some advice from them. Any equipment changes you're looking at for 2019? Um if there are, when do you start testing that if you're going to be playing in January? And is there any new sponsors or anything coming on board now that you're on the LPGA Tour? Yeah, I'm going to stay with Titleist Golf Ball, and then I'm going to stay with Ping Clubs. I'm actually going out to Ping in Phoenix on December 10th, so I'm really looking forward to that and trying out different clubs and just seeing how I can improve things in my game, which is really exciting. I love going and doing that. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. Um, and sponsors still kind of looking into that. It's been a little bit tough, uh, but hopefully just by playing well next year, that'll be easier and more exposure on the LPGA, but that's definitely something I've been looking into. Do you have to go try to find an agent as well at this point, or is that still potentially in the future? Yeah, I've had someone helping me out, which has been great, uh, but definitely something down the road to get more involved. So yes, definitely. Well, let's talk about the you know, end of the year season on the Symmetra Tour where when the chips were down, you had to play some really consistent golf, which you did. So you had the win earlier in the year, which, you know, definitely helped on the money list. But uh, for the people who don't follow the Symmetra Tour, the money list, you know, usually if you win on tour, you're going to be good to get a top 10 or 15. It's not that on a Symmetra Tour. Um, The money list can change quickly. So there was some real pressure at the end of the year. And you had, you know, Four top tens in the last five tournaments. Your worst finish was T15s. Great stuff. And I guess my question is, and maybe listeners can gain from this, what did you do in your game or your mental side or the whole thing to be able to perform at that level when you really needed it down the stretch? You know, was there something that clicked? Is it the experience of being on tour for two years? How do you get yourself to play at that level when you absolutely need it? Yeah, so I think I actually I actually missed two cuts before going to those last six events and moved down the money list a little bit and didn't play well in my first of those last six and I think dropped down to number seven on the money list because that was a pretty big purse event. I was kind of getting a little bit nervous, but knew I was hitting the ball really, really well and putting well, and I liked the next few golf courses. And I think my biggest change in attitude was that – For a few events, I was kind of just looking at other people and seeing what number five on the money list is doing, or if this person missed the cut, I won't move down, or if this person wins, I'll move down two spots. And instead of doing that, I kind of changed my mindset and went out to just go and earn my card and wanted to move up two spots every week and not focus on anyone else. And I actually didn't look at the money list. I uh, would play two events and then look at it and then stop. I'd only look at it once. So I think before that, I was kind of obsessing a little bit over it uh, just because I was stressed and it was a lot of pressure. So instead of worrying about other people, I was just worrying about myself and going out to play my best golf that I could and go and earn my LPGA card and do the best that I could. So with that mindset, did you find yourself – you know, because you were in the position, if you just kind of held court to get to the LPGA Tour, did you play aggressive golf? Or at times, did you have to play, did you play more conservative because, you know, top tens were so huge for the position that you were in to keep, you know, the position that you were going to be in to get your LPGA card? Did you, or did you just have to let it go and play the golf that you're comfortable playing? A little bit of both. I definitely played too conservative uh, when I missed those cuts and was just 
worrying about messing up instead of going out there to make birdie shoot under par and try and win golf tournaments. So I definitely had to change my mindset and go and play a little bit more aggressively and play my game, which is a bit more aggressive to begin with and just play golf and not worry about all of that. But I definitely played more aggressively and went out to try and win every tournament instead of just trying to make cuts. So definitely wanted to go and win and had a couple top tens in there, which definitely helped. They talk about experience is invaluable and You know, you had a really good rookie campaign in 2017, the semester tour, finishing 16th on the money list. And sort of now looking back at this journey, how valuable was that first year of being out there and, like you said, sort of getting your footing of how you react in tournament situations to have the success that you had in 2018? In other words, was that really a building block to be out there for that first year to get to where you needed for the second year? Yes, it definitely was. It was so much different from college and a bit of an adjustment. I was figuring out all my travel plans, where I was staying. And we had the whole week to prepare and kind of balancing how much practice I needed, how much time I needed on the course to figure out all that, how much working out I wanted to do on the road. And I think for those first events of my rookie year, I was overdoing it, was too exhausted, really wasn't enjoying myself. So I really had to find that balance. And I think that really helped the second half of my rookie year and especially this past year I just really knew when I needed to kind of back off and just do a lighter practice or when I really needed to go out and see the course and play and just really focused on what I needed to work on and my rookie year I also was in the final group I think twice and finished second in one event um, when I was playing in that final group when I had the lead and didn't win and then I think going into this year and I was a little bit more comfortable playing in those final groups and wanted to just enjoy the experience of having that and played a lot better. And it was, it was definitely a learning experience after my first year. I've heard players talk about this where it slows down a little bit, the more experience you have. So under the pressure later in 2018, did it seem more comfortable than it was the first time you kind of go around, you know, in those situations? Could you tell, okay, I've been here. I know what to do. I know what my body is going to do and my mind is going to tell me. Is it? Did it become a little bit easier as you went along with it? It definitely becomes easier. It's Of course, you still have those nerves, but I think you expect those nerves and just kind of know how to deal with them. So I think that's definitely helpful. And I just kind of knew how I was going to react in those situations. So that was definitely very helpful. And in 2019, I'm sure you have some goals that you you have for yourself for the LPGA tour. If you'd like to share them, how how do you manage that? Meaning, of course, you know, winning a major championship would be amazing, but you know, also your first year out there, you know, finishing top 50 in the money list would be a really good year as well. But you know, you don't want to settle for, you know, not getting the best out of yourself. So how do you find that balance of, of having goals that aren't too winning four majors in a, in a year or something like that versus just trying to hold on to your card. How do you find that right balance that you can be satisfied with your first year on the LPGA tour without, you know, selling anything short per se? Definitely. Yeah. I think I'm coming up with some goals now, uh, kind of overarching goals that then when I go out and play next year, I'm kind of going to put them aside and just focus on one tournament at a time and what I need to do to accomplish those goals. And that's definitely something I worked on this past year. Top 10 was the overarching goal. And then what I had to do to be able to accomplish that was the smaller goals associated with that. So I'm definitely going to try and focus on those smaller goals next year. And I think it'll, I'll just be able to enjoy golf a little bit more and just enjoy playing, which definitely this year I enjoyed it. and It was fun, but it was definitely stressful trying to get that top 10. So I think I'm just not going to worry too much about the money list next year because when I didn't worry this past year, I definitely played my best golf. So definitely have those big goals in the back of my mind but just go and focus on those small goals and just play golf (laughs) well I have one final one so speaking of caddying I talked to Maya a little bit ago it's Maya Schechter for the listeners who don't know she also is a a, a player on the uh, Symmetra tour who we got to be friendly with and she has agreed to let me caddy for her the week at the uh, Island Resort uh, championship up at the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So if I am caddying for Maya that week, what advice would you give me for your good, you know, so I'm helping your good friend and hopefully have a good finish versus, you know, hindering her in any way? Oh, this is a tough one. I know. Uh, I, 
I think just stay chatty with her. Maya's fun on the golf course. She likes to have fun. So definitely be chatty with her. And she's definitely a slow walker. I'm going to warn you on that. So just walk slow with her and just enjoy it. But she's a great person to be around when playing golf. Yeah, I already said, like, she's the boss. I'm just staying out of the way, you know, carrying the bag. You know, you tell me what you need out of it. But I think it's going to be really fun. I can't, you know, to caddy in a professional event at that level. I think it's going to be really interesting to see the ebbs and flows of it and, you know, watch it really up close. So I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, that'll be such a fun experience for both of you. And you definitely have the right idea. Just let her be the boss and you guys will have a good time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, keep us in the loop of how everything's going. When you get that first win on the LPGA Tour, um, <laughs> hopefully we can get you back on here and kind of talk about that process. But, you know, speaking for everyone at Sub 70, like we couldn't be more excited to kind of watch your journey and, and, and see where it's going to take you. And I think with the talent you have, you're going to be just fine out there. Thank you. I hope so. Thanks for having me again, Jason. No problem. Have a great day. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right.